Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. You are listening to Deeper, your daily Bible study. Today is Tuesday, July 2. The title of our lesson is Stewards of the Earth. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the things that we will read and study and be challenged by in this lesson today. We ask that you would send your Holy Spirit uh, on us and on each person that is listening, whenever and wherever that happens, that uh, we may understand your thoughts in these subjects. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, David, we are continuing our study of Genesis chapter 1. Uh, this quarter's lessons are titled, The Least of These, Ministering to Those in Need. And uh, we're looking at God's original plan for humanity. And I'm going to start by reading Genesis 1, 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, this is Adam and Eve, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now, there are five, um, I guess you could say jobs, <laughs> five intents, that may be a better word, five intents that God has for humanity at creation here. And they're all in this verse we just read. God wanted them to be fruitful. He intended for them to multiply. He intended for them to subdue the earth. Uh, he intended uh, for them to have dominion and also replenish the earth. So we're just going to go through these one by one today and look at the lessons for us in our lives and what God wants to do within us. So David, let's start with the first item here. Uh, God says that he wanted Adam and Eve and humanity to be fruitful. Uh, pretty clear reference, isn't it, to uh, the reproductive process? Right, right. It, this is a process that <laughs> we know that it means to have children. And it was a blessing based on the concept of marriage, a blessing that the Lord gave uh, as he made man and wife to be, I mean, man and woman to become a uh, husband and wife and become a, a, a unit of a home. He gave them that blessing to be able to have children. And this is something that, you know, um, marriages are one of the reasons why they're there, you know, to have children, but not just, you know, have procreation. That's not only what this fruitful right. means. It also means spiritually to be able to have a mm -hmm. uh, growing, to be able to have growth, to be able to have develop spiritual gifts, you know, be able to reproduce and again, grow in the likeness of, of who God is, you know, learning what it means to love and care and, and, you know, give yourself more and more and more for someone else and for your family. So ultimately, um, this, this thing was a blessing. And, and we can actually go to, you know, uh, I believe in the notes you have clearly that John 15 speaks of Jesus being the vine and we are the branches. You know, we are to take right. fruits and be able to have a lot of fruits. You know, if we don't have fruits, uh, sadly, you know, what is our purpose really? Uh, and, and, you know, a, 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 to bring this home a little more, Tim, if you allow me to be really, <laughs> you know, how many of us really have have put in our minds this idea that we are to be fruitful, that truly the Lord is expecting us, has given us the possibilities, uh, whether it's in our home with our spouses and our children, but to really have the fruits that he wants us to have, patience, joy, uh, you know, temperance, long suffering, all these things that are really gifts from him. Uh, ultimately, I think that's what we should put our minds to, our emphasis into, and that's what we should, I think, have uh, as a as a as a plan. You know, to to have the fruits, uh, be fruitful in, in the fullness of, of the word. That's right. That's in John fifteen verse two. Jesus says, "Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away; and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit." And then Jesus says in the next verse, you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. It's interesting that it was the word of God in Genesis, uh, which we've been studying here, that 
originally revealed his purpose and his intent for humanity, he really is saying the same thing there in John 15. If we want to be fruitful, we must um, be filled with the word. We must allow God to, to live his life within us. And that is how we accomplish this purpose for humanity. Now, uh, going back to Genesis 1 verse 28, the second thing that God uh, says to Adam and Eve is that they should multiply. Um, and again, David, I see here a, a pretty strong reference to the fact that it's not just a little bit of fruit. God intended for humanity to bear much fruit. And, um, you know, obviously he still wants this for us, especially spiritually. Uh, his blessings <clears throat> are higher and broader, <laughs> uh, more exalted than we can imagine, his, his plan for our lives. And so he wants to uh, not just duplicate, he wants to multiply these blessings uh, from, from himself to humanity. Right, right. <clears throat> now let's go to the third item here. God also says that they are to subdue the earth. Now the original uh, word in Hebrew for subdue is, is male, which literally means to fill or to complete. So humanity was to continue multiplying until they had filled the earth. And uh, David, there's some pretty strong spiritual and prophetic connotations there as well, aren't there? Absolutely. I mean, to fill or complete. This is a concept that I think that we are, as Christians, we are to really, you know, put in our minds. We have talked uh, often about Matthew 24, 14, that mentions that, you know, the gospel must be preached to all the world as a witness. And, uh, you know, we all have, I think that most Christians will agree that we understand we are to take this gospel and, you know, the true um, good news of, the, of, of Jesus Christ to the world. However, many times we are, you know, maybe we're not doing <laughs> this concept uh, uh, justice because we might not be doing really anything. You know, we want someone else to do it and we expect uh, a preacher or an evangelist to be the one that carries the gospel. But ourselves, we don't feel that need to fulfill, to subdue the earth, to complete the earth, you know, to complete it with the gospel of Christ. Uh, and I think that uh, part of the reason why this, this promise will only be fulfilled as a witness is because it has to be done by individuals, by people, not only by a, the evangelism or, or preaching, in, you know, to the masses, but has to be given by people individually. And this is how you really subdue the earth uh, with the gospel of Christ. You know, we individuals take it as a witness. That's right. And I'll have to correct myself. Uh, we've actually been talking about the word replenish rather than subdue. So I apologize for that. Let's go now to the fourth thing that God says that he wants humanity to do, and that is to subdue the earth. Uh, and again, if you're interested in this, the Hebrew word behind that is kadash, which means to subject or to make subservient. And this is very interesting. Uh, David, let's turn to Genesis 2, verse 15. Just, All right. Uh, a few verses later here. Yeah. And uh, we're, we see here a uh, more detailed purpose of God for Adam and Eve there in the Garden of Eden. Well, what were they supposed to be doing as they lived in this paradise? And uh, if you would like to go ahead and read that. Right. Genesis 2, 15. It reads, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now, so uh, I'll admit, to do. <laughs> I, that's right. I'll admit, I don't completely understand uh, what that meant in a perfect garden without weeds and, and so forth, without bugs. Um, <laughs> but apparently there was some aspect of their job where they were to bring, um, well, I'll say it this way, to to exert a subduing influence on the, the elements of nature, even there in Eden. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, dressing the vines. Uh, again, I don't know exactly what that meant. I don't think there was weeding to do. But let's or take pruning, that. maybe, you know. Pruning, yeah. Or perhaps Absolutely. there was some sort of, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, this is um, speculation, but maybe it meant, for example, uh, plants, he would take some some of them and give them to the animals, feed them to the animals. I don't know, you know, <laughs> right. and that way keep keep the growth going, but in a in a more um, 
like you said, dressing it in a way, you know, like you, you know, have a creative ideas in, in making them, I don't know, more beautiful, I guess, or, or just different things that we, you know, gardens can do, you know. Uh, right, I remember right. going to, there's a famous um, garden that the the gardeners actually keep uh, trim, you know, the trees and stuff in, in shapes of different animals. And it's mm-hmm. quite amazing to see these beautiful creations on trees, you know, that are just beautiful mm-hmm. animals, but, you know, they're trees. So I'm not saying that he had some shears, but, you know, my point is that right. maybe there was some sort of, <laughs> uh, I don't know, God gave them a certain degree of, creativity to, for him to make the garden even more beautiful, you know, right. by allowing him right. to, to, you know, so. Now let's take that concept and apply it spiritually and prophetically to our day. Um, right. Is it not true that God intends the gospel to uh, exert a subduing influence on those that hear it? Uh, this is this is our mission as part of the Great Commission, you know, to, to teach them, to observe these things. The, the natural human heart wants nothing to do with with following God or obeying him. But we have the promise that through the power of the gospel, through the power of, of Jesus living within people, he can subdue those, um, uh, you know, the uh, the sinful elements in our lives and that uh, we can be different people because of Jesus. Right, right, right. Uh, I think that now, the gospel needs to really allow us to be... Um, you know, creative in the sense of sharing this this good news and and with others, but also in our own lives, is it really makes us grow to be more? Um, I don't know, you know, more beautiful in a sense. You know, is, is our characters more beautiful, more attractive to the world? I think this is where truly, you know, we are to apply this individually. You know, has the gospel, has me contemplating Christ, is giving those fruits, those you know, things that the earth is lacking or needing and, and others for them to see Christ in me. So I think that that's the word better, you know, applied, subdued. Right. <laughs> Has I subdued my, 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 my will to the Lord? Is, is I am I hidden in Christ? And that's really what I think the gospel should do in us. The final element here of God's purpose for humanity at creation is that they would have dominion. Uh, over this earth. And, you know, a job is a lot easier to do when you know that success is assured. And Adam and Eve knew that they were assured of success because God had given them dominion uh, over the rest of creation here on earth. And the same promise, again, spiritually, is given uh, to Christ's church. I'm reading here from the, the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Jesus says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So what an encouragement. Um, And this promise from Christ certainly is one that the church has held on to. We need to continue holding on to it today so that we can have the confidence that success is assured, even when we can't always see that uh, physically. Well, we are just about out of time for today. I thank you for joining us, and I hope that you've been blessed by the time spent in God's Word. I just want to remind you of our website, pathwaytoparadise.org. You can find um, recordings from every previous episode this entire year. Uh, It's uh, hundreds of them by now. Yeah, and of course this episode is also available there we have study guides that can be downloaded or read online on our blog just go to pathwaytoparadise.org and follow the links for deeper there and uh, we thank you for joining us I hope you have a blessed day and we look forward to studying with you again tomorrow Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.